Nick Calamos is the chief investment officer of Calamos Asset Management. Its international growth fund and growth and income fund rank in the top 4% or higher year to date and for the past year. Nick, great to have you back here on Street Smart. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Hey, quick question. I want to kick it off with you're going to be on a panel tomorrow and it's called uh, What Lies Ahead for Financial Markets, reading the tea leaves. So tell me, what is ahead for the financial markets? You've got to make investment decisions daily, monthly. Uh, what do you think uh, we can see in the next six to 12 months? Well, we think uh, wealth is going to continue to follow uh, for the most part the emerging economies. And as you can see, the commodities market also is trying to uh, trying to readjust to what's happening out there. But the growth in wealth creation is occurring in the emerging economies, not in the developed world to a large extent. So that's, that's where capital is going to continue to flow. Which, which Nick, which uh, commodities do you favor right now? Where do you think capital flows the most? Well, I think uh, one of the things that's, that you see with the commodities market here is that uh, it's trying to adjust to the uh, excess monetary flows into the emerging markets and at the same time trying to adjust to the infrastructure build that's going on. So we're very excited about infrastructure companies, any of the manufacturing companies or commodities that are related to infrastructure build. And the Chinese will build something 10, 20 years ahead of time if they need to to keep their economy going. So that's good for commodities. We like the agriculture commodities. We like the industrial-based commodities. And then precious metals are a little bit of a, uh, a play against uh, continued devaluation in currencies that I think we'll see with the developed world. Nick, so there's a bit of a debate out there. We kind of kicked off our broadcast talking about that debate about the commodity world. You have Morgan Stanley basically saying if you get out of commodities right now, it's too premature. Goldman Sachs, meantime, is telling investors that they should reduce most of their holdings. Is Goldman wrong in your view? Well, you know, it's all an issue of timing. So I don't think Goldman's wrong very short term. But long term, we're probably looking at a secular growth opportunity in commodities. So short term, you can take a little bit off the table because the emerging world is really trying to slow down growth. They're raising reserve requirements. They're raising interest rates. They're taxing hot money flows. So they're trying to slow things down. Short term, that's not too good for, the, for commodities. Also, the U.S. is going to remove one of the training wheels uh, with quantitative easing here. And we're going to see what happens there, too. So. Across the world, we are seeing some monetary uh, tightening. Right. What do you think is going to happen uh, when the Fed stops its quantitative easing uh, program? I think you've actually talked about the possibility of QE3. So two things. What happens when QE2 goes away, and how likely is QE3 in your view? You know, I think it's very likely, maybe not, not right away, but aggregate demand in this country will not grow at a very high rate. GDP is going to be stubborn here as we, we try to work through this debt deflation bubble. We did not solve the problem. We just private we just took the private debt and made it a public issue. So we're going to monetize that debt, and QE3 is going to be part of that. So what it, part it, of the solution? What, what do you, how do you envision QE3? And does that you know a lot of people have said QE1 and QE2 are uh, the main reasons behind the incredible run-up in commodities, the, the commodity inflation that we see. Does QE3 continue that trend? Well, I think it does, although, uh, remember, we're, we're going to continue to monetize this debt, and that means you're going to print money to pay for, for debt in the future. If China does not revalue their currency quick enough, we're going to continue down that QE3 path also. That will lead into additional inflation in commodities, but also the difference in supply and demand right now favors commodity pricing and at the same time the infrastructure built in the, in the emerging economies that's real and that's going to ultimately cause probably a commodity bubble right because the story is so good the growth is so good and the money flows are so hot so nick you talked with matt earlier about some of the commodities you like specifically what are the kind of companies um, are, that you're investing in to play off of uh, the commodity areas you like and be specific as specific as you can be for us Yes, you know, companies like uh, Caterpillar and Deer are going to benefit continually from the infrastructure building, both in, in the agriculture side and, of course, building roads and, and bridges and highway systems. So they're, they're in a great position. They're a little bit, little bit rich in price, but we think this is a secular growth opportunity, and therefore they're still very attractive. From a pure agricultural standpoint, you also have to like the fertilizer companies. You have to probably think very hard about the, uh, the seed companies in here. So I think that 
that on a long-term perspective, as a growth manager, I want to have some exposure there. I will cut them, cut them back when the pricing gets uh, too rich, but I probably will not completely sell out of those type of positions. Meaning, and then meaning finally, potash, you mosaic. Have to like tech technology. You, you mean potash, yeah, exactly. mosaic, Archer Daniels Midland? Yes, exactly. And, and then what, what were you saying and, finally? And then, Go ahead. Technology companies that are, are also in a phenomenal position globally, productivity growth is key to the developed worlds right now. And uh, the best way to, to, to drive your productivity here is to invest in better technology and equipment. And of course, emerging markets will be doing that also. So we're very heavy technology. We think uh, th that's really probably the next next sector that'll uh, lead this economy forward. Nick, technology is a huge universe. Narrow it down for me. So what kind of companies within the IT universe uh, are you buying? So we, companies like Autodesk that are helping uh, companies redesign and manufacture uh, products and, in fact, engineering new, new buildings in a much more effective and efficient manner. Uh, we're still very heavy in, in Apple that you could argue is a consumer products company, mm -hmm. but they're really also a uh, productivity enhancement company uh, as far as we can see. Uh, we're all also very overweight in a lot of the semiconductor uh, stocks, including applied materials that's making the, making the machines for the semiconductors. So we're excited about a lot of different areas in the, in the technology front and as software companies. Uh, like Oracle also is a, another overweighted position for us. We got to run. Nick, thank you so much for carving out some time for us. We appreciate it. Nick Calamos, Chief Investment Officer, President over at Calamos Asset Management.